It's fair to say that before and during the Second World War, engineering was seen as very much a man's job. Of course, during the First World War, many women had been recruited to work in factories, manufacturing arms and munitions, but only in the role of workers on the shop floor, not in design. Beatrice Schilling was one of the few that broke the mould. She was born on the 8th of March 1909 in Waterlooville in Hampshire, grew up playing with Meccano instead of dolls, asking questions about engines instead of cookery, and spending her pocket money on tools instead of makeup. And at the age of 14, she bought a motorbike to tinker with. She left school in her teens, like most people in those days, but instead of becoming a secretary or shop assistant, she took on an apprenticeship in an electrical engineering company owned by a woman called Margaret Partridge, another pioneer of women in engineering, who was the founding member of the Women's Engineering Society. She then attended the Victoria University of Manchester, where she graduated in 1932 with another woman, and they both received a bachelor's degree. A further year of study saw her gain a Master of Science in Mechanical Engineering. Her main hobby was racing motorbikes, and on the 24th of August 1934, she was awarded a British Motorcycle Racing Club Gold Star for being only the second woman to lap the Brooklyn circuit at over 100 miles per hour on her Norton M30. In 1936, she was hired by the Royal Aircraft Establishment, or the RAE for short, in Farnborough, Hampshire, as a scientific officer. The establishment was the RAF's research facility. Initially, in the Technical Publications Department, before she moved on to working with engines. On November the 1st, she became the Technical Officer and later Principal Technical Officer in Carburetta Research. It was in this work that Beatrice Schilling made a name for herself, when she came up with a device that literally saved the lives of pilots and planes in the Battle of Britain. The carburettor on a Rolls-Royce Merlin engine that powered the Hurricanes and Spitfires had a vital flaw. When the plane went into a negative G manoeuvre, such as a dive or a barrel roll, the fuel in the float chamber initially moved away from the jet that squirts the fuel-slash-air mixture into the carburettor body, which meant the pistons on their induction stroke weren't drawing fuel in, so they had nothing to fire. This, in turn, caused the engine to cut out. The float, similar to the ball valve in a toilet cistern, was forced fully open by the movement of the fuel, so even more fuel entered the chamber. When the plane righted itself, there was too much fuel in the system, which meant that when, or worse, if the engine restarted, there was a bang and a cloud of black smoke from the exhaust, which was the excess fuel partially burning off. This can be seen and heard in the opening scenes of the 1969 film, The Battle of Britain. Incidentally, the Messerschmitts used were supplied by the Spanish Air Force, which bought some from Germany and then produced them themselves. In a dogfight with an ME-109, this loss of power wasn't ideal. The German fighters never suffered this problem, as their engines were fuel-injected, and the second or two they gained through the British Pain's temporary loss of power gave them a vital edge. Beatrice Schilling found a solution. That was to put a small brass thimble with a small hole between the fuel line and the float chamber. This was then revised as a brass disc similar to a washer. The hole was large enough to allow the required amount of fuel through, but small enough to restrict the flow when the plane inverted. This worked, and with the team, she travelled around the country visiting airfields and modifying the planes. It was a simple job that only required removing the inlet fuel line from the carburettor, dropping the disc in, and then replacing the fuel line. The disc, called the RAE restrictor, became known as the Miss Schilling Orifice, or the Tilly Orifice, a name given to it by Sir Stanley Hooker, who was the developing superchargers at Rolls-Royce, after Beatrice's nickname of Tilly. The solution was a stopgap until the introduction of pressure carburettors in 1943, which solved the problem of fuel starvation and flooding. After the war, Beatrice stayed at RAE, working on such projects as the Blue Streak missile. She joined the Institution of Mechanical Engineers in 1956 under her married name of Naylor. She was awarded the post nominals CENG, short for Chartered Engineer. She stayed at RAE until 1969. She had married her husband George in 1938. They had met at RAE where he also worked. The story went that she refused to marry him until he got a Brooklyn's gold star like her for lapping the circuit at 100 miles per hour. He was a bomber pilot in World War II, reaching the rank of flight lieutenant and being awarded the Distinguished Flying Cross. Beatrice also kept up her motorsports after the war along with her husband George, racing cars. They modified and raced various cars, mainly at Goodwood, and in 1967, she was hired to help F1 driver Dan Gurney with his overheating problems on his Eagle Mark I. Beatrice Tilly Schilling died on the 18th of November 1990. It can be safely said that she was one of those unsung heroes of the World War II whose contribution to the war effort really did make a difference.
And when people talk of strong women, Beatrice Schilling definitely fits into this category. Well, thank you all for listening. Hope you all enjoyed it. Don't forget to like and subscribe as it really does help the channel. And drop me a comment if you enjoyed the episode or if there's anything you would like me to talk about. Thank you all for watching. We'll see you on the next one.